Did you know Obamacare could create 11 million new entrepreneurs? <laughs> Actually, that's what a Harvard Business School study said a few years ago because of job lock. Job lock is when you don't want to move to another job because you worry about losing health insurance. <laughs> Actually, there's a wonderful story in the New York Times about this woman who, who was, as a student, was working in Peru and she was helping young mothers out in the, you know, in the poor areas of the country, you know, get vaccines vaccinations for their kids and she said hey we could do a little silicone bracelet for every child so they keep up on this so when she came back from that study and she finished school she worked on the bracelet a little bit and but she got a job a regular job an insurance company and then the Gates Foundation wanted to give her a hundred thousand dollars to work on a little bracelet but she didn't mind taking the 60% salary cut but she said she couldn't do it because of health care she needed health care and that kept her from getting that hundred thousand dollars to, to do the bracelet now she finally did the bracelet and, and became like a woman of the year and you know and all kind of awards for doing this and helping children who normally wouldn't get vaccinations to live longer in life because now they're able to get them so that's why something like this health care is stopping that there are other studies that show that up to 25 percent of us are in jobs locked into these jobs because with job lock. We're afraid. We can't get health care. So we're going to stay in this job that we hate. We don't, we're not going to grow. We're not going to create new ideas. We're not going to contribute more to society that we have in us to contribute because of job lock. <laughs> so no matter what you say bad about Obamacare, and there's a lot of screwed up things that have happened with this thing, but it's better than the alternative you know, <laughs> that we had. So that's why now you could do what you really want to do in life, really because you have a, a chance to get health care. For almost nothing. You know, the best place to take advantage of government money is not from Washington. It's actually at the state level because the money comes from Washington, but that goes to the state and then it goes to the people. So what we've done, people belong to lesco.com. You go to right to our website and we have 25 of the best programs all set up for you to apply for right at your own state. It's a state by state map. You click on the map and you'll see where to go in your state, like how to pay back student loans. There's programs now to help you if you have problems paying your student loans or cheap insurance for your kids. That's right. Even Obamacare, there's other stuff that's already out there. How about free phones or even free cell phones or money to pay for groceries? How about $8,000 to train for a new job? $2,000 in unclaimed money. That's how much sitting in your government offices right in your state capital that's available. Or how about cheap health care from centers or even you know uh, rehab money, <laughs> drug rehab or any of those kind of issues, free prescription drugs that you don't know about, child care, cash, transportation, healthcare and even job training this is for moms or dads that need a new job or free and cheap care just for seniors or an extra fifteen hundred dollars just for seniors this is money that's set aside for them you know, or free help paying your bills your rent and even your mortgage or free treatment by the best doctors in the world that's right they get grants to treat conditions for free or an extra five thousand dollars in spending money for your family or six thousand dollars five hundred six thousand five hundred dollars for weatherizing your home or how about money to pay your heating and cooling bills or child support you're not getting your child support where well, there's cops they'll go out and chase down that money for you or actually every state actually has there's a, a half a billion dollars sitting in unclaimed child support so we'll show you the office you go to and pick up your check that's probably waiting there because they went out and collected and you didn't even know about 350 colleges that you could go to for free that's right it's really for seniors people 55 or 60 or more go back to school for free start a whole new career or how about four hundred dollars a week when you're out of work or two hundred and thirty dollars a month in commuting money because you have to commute to work how about vets there's all kinds of new money programs and services and help just for vets or how about your veterinarian <laughs> for your dog free care for your dog Fido and Oscar whoever or, or extra money for women to feed uh, that, that have kids or down payment money and closing cost money up to ten thousand dollars or how about free help to start any kind 
kind of business, nonprofit organization, or anything like that you want to do. It's all there right at your state government. And we just click on this link, <laughs> click on your state, and you get that whole list. Click the link to, uh, boop, <laughs> click the link to apply. Now, if you're not a member, we're taking care of you too. We don't have 25 for you, but we have five free ones. So go to the non-member section there and you just click on that and you get the best five for free. Okay, now here's an incredible figure to me. Seven million and 13 months. That's right. <laughs> Seven million and 13 months. Now this interview will show you how this guy did it. And actually, see, there's thousands of sites out there now, internet websites that you can go on and they'll help you get money for your idea or whatever. It's all free money. You, know, <laughs> you don't have to pay back. It's either pre-ordering a product or, or just a gift to help you get on with your idea and raise money. And this guy went around looking at these sites and even the big guys, he said, God, see, the big guys will take 7%. You know, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, or whatever. So he was saying, well, well, he wasn't sure even if this product would fly, but he said, hey, there must be an easier way than dealing with all the big bureaucracies and, and trying to get money for his idea. So he went to something called, oh, a little site of his own, I mean, a place that where he, he could get this stuff on his own site. You know, it's called selfstarter.us. And, and so that's some software you could put on your own site to, to raise some money. It's selfstarter.us. And he used that and he got $7 million in 13 months without using any of these big guys or whatever. And, and just explaining his idea to people, his, his, his product. And, and this is the guy who invented a product. He was out in the garage tinkering and he went to an entrepreneur school, Babson College, a real cool entrepreneur school up in the Boston area. So he's always been tinkering around with ideas and doing something. So he's out in the garage tinkering with ideas and, and there's somebody at the door and he said, gee, now he's missing the dry cleaner, the UPS guy and everything. And he said, gee, wouldn't it be great to have, when the bell rang, I could see who's at the front door on my phone. So he figured out, you know, he kind of just fished around the internet or friends of friends or whatever, figure out how this can be engineered to do. And so he put together a prototype and then that's where he got $7 million in 13 months. So the important lesson about him, I mean, he, he talks about what it takes to do this kind of thing because it, it, it really, the bottom line of all this is passion. As I see, he explains, the, it's a pain in the butt to do anything. You're going to run into roadblocks no matter what you do in life. But if you have passion for it, like he really believed in his product, you know, that's why if you're selling something else and you don't care what it is and you're just trying to make money, that's not passion. You know, because you run into roadblocks and uh, if you have a roadblock, you go somewhere else where it's easier. But if you have passion for something, whatever roadblock is thrown in front of you, you're going to get over that. You really want to make, you know, meet that girl and go out with her or whatever and she hangs up on the phone three times. Well, then you're stalking her at the corner of the grocery store or whatever, <laughs> hoping to run into her. You know, that's, I mean, you're always looking for another way to solve the problem. When, Plan A doesn't work. And that's going to happen a thousand times because life ain't simple. Yeah. <laughs> and you think, oh, I'll just do that. But no, uh, it doesn't. See, that's what he found out too is that when you put your product or idea on the internet, he got feedback from customers on how to make it better before he made it. That's right, all he had was a prototype. So he's collecting $7 million. He was collecting ideas on how to make it better. Yeah. <laughs> and, and see, when people are giving you money for the product, then you know it's real. You go out and do a market survey. Hey, would you buy a green this or whatever that? And Man, you know, they're gonna please you. That's not a real idea on, on if that's gonna sell or not. Yeah. But if you, hey, here it is. Will you give me money? I got to go make them. That's real. They give you your credit card. That's a market survey. And that's a true test uh, of if your idea is sellable or not. Don't try to just ask your mother-in-law if they'll buy it. They'll probably never buy it anyway. So you go out and ask the crowd, will they put up money? And that's how you could do this nowadays. So watch how he did this. Seven million, 13 months.
Well, James Siminoff, man, you must be real proud of yourself and made your parents proud, too. I mean, you found all these you know, people out there on the website having crowdfunding sites, and you said, God, I can do that. And you create your own crowdfunding site. And with your product, though, you raised seven million dollars in about 13 months. Wow. <laughs> Don't you love going home and showing off? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been uh, it's been a, a wild and crazy and uh, pretty, pretty good 13 months. I guess. I <laughs> well, first, show us the product that you invented. So it's the it's the doorbot and it's a doorbell for the smartphone. So it's, uh, it's, ah. it's dual powered. So if you you can, it's battery operated. If you uh, if you don't have an old doorbell, and if you do have an old doorbell, you can actually put the wires to it, and it'll charge and ring your doorbell inside. So it's wow. a doorbell for the smartphones, and now you can see and speak to anyone at your door from anywhere in the world. Wow! So <laughs> I could be at Starbucks, you know, screwing off, and and somebody come, UPS guy comes, and they'll ring the doorbell, and I'll see him, and I can tell him, hey, just leave the package. It's okay. That's, and that happens all the time. I mean, I was in China and my dry cleaner came from like, <laughs> California and I said, just put it right around the side of the house. And he, and he did and it was all uh, good. So. Was that a Chinese laundry? Or what? Yes, I know it wasn't. It didn't happen to me. But it would have been ironic if it was. Yeah. <laughs> it's a wonderful idea. Now, you've been in little like gadget business before, more technology and, and very successful. But what made you think of this? I mean, are you a family man homeowner now or something like that? Is that what? So I was actually, I was actually working in my garage as any inventor should. And, uh -huh. um, you know, we would, we would never see or hear anyone coming to the door. So uh -huh. people visiting packages, everything. And I literally looked online and I just figured I'd, I'd like, let me get a doorbell that goes to my phone through the yeah. internet because nothing would reach that far back and um, it just didn't exist. And so yeah. we decided what, like, just put it on the idea list of like something that we should do. <laughs> That's wonderful. So it, it's really for a, a, an inventor in the garage invented something because he's an inventor in a garage to solve the problem. I mean, it, it, is, it, it is kind of like funny that like, you know, being in the garage actually it, it causes the invention to happen. So everyone should put themselves in the garage. I can see your whole life that way. Well, these airplanes aren't fast enough. I think I'll go home and invent a better one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but that's the way the system works, isn't it? I, mean, I, I think you got to sort of let it roll a little bit. Sometimes people are too, um, like, they box themselves out. They're so frustrated that they want to do something that they don't allow the sort of, like, you got to allow the world to sort of, like, enter into your brain. And so you got to just sort of travel around, be in places, put yourself in positions where, you will come up with something and that's that's it is the best way versus trying to like sit around a table and force yourself to think of a good idea which right is i see right because if you're doing things and something beats you up or something that that's a spark of imagination you wouldn't have had anywhere else right yeah and i continue to look at some of the best products that are out there and they're all guys that you're you know, are women or anyone you know inventors yeah. that needed that for what they were doing or wanted it for what they were doing and so yeah i think it's uh, i think it's a great way of coming up with ideas and that also is to me the the mo what gives you the motivation to make go go through all the hurdles that are going to be there you know if you don't believe in it and saw it happen your first you know it's not like your mother telling you to do something you know <laughs> Exactly. I mean, and you need to, you do, you need to have passion in order to do a business. You can't make yeah. a business work without passion. And so typically if you come up with something because it was something in your environment, you're probably passionate about it. Yeah. Like I'm passionate about solving this problem because it actually was a problem that, that was affecting me. And so, yeah, I'm very passionate about it. So then the idea, I mean, well, the idea of finding an idea is something that you have to relate to physically to have that passion somehow, uh, because otherwise, at least in my mind, you're never, I mean, everything you do in life is a pain in the ass, right? <laughs> you're going to have problems. Yeah. Everything's really hard, yeah. If, if, right. you don't, if you're not excited about it and have a passion for it, you're, there's just no way. You can't, you can't build a company like a job. It's, it's not right. that, you know, you, you, because there's too many times that you hit these walls and the only way to get through the wall is to be passionate. It's like a, it's like that energy that just flows right through everything. <laughs> now, I, I believe that in so much, too. But like even now, when you fundraise, you create your own site, website uh, to fundraise. And you said there's another place that you, you create it yourself. But there's other people now you could fundraise on your own site with somebody else's back end stuff yep. instead of 
sharing like 7% with these other fundraising sites, right? Yeah. I mean, so, so we, created, we created the fundraising site because we thought that might be a good business also. Right. Um, I mean, uh, as of right now, it has not turned out to be a good business. The doorbell business has turned out to be a great business. <laughs> and again, like that's the business into life is like, you know, let sometimes let the world direct you a little bit, you know, let yeah. the, those inbound sort of um, feelers that are out there, let, let, let that, you know, take you around. And so, yeah. but, but there are, there, there's, you know, Kickstarter and Indiegogo are two great sites to crowdfund on. And if you want to, there's selfstarter.us, which is actually like a, it's a place that you can literally just do your own thing. You don't have to pay anything for the platform. Totally wow. So in other words, like your the case. The drawback is there's no one on that. So you have uh, to then right. create all of the, the interest. But uh, that's what you did. You created all the interest and you saved yourself, what, like $150,000, $200,000 or something like that. More, more than that even, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's phenomenal. I mean, uh, and, and it's not that difficult unless you're really insecure. You want to test one of these other things first. Yeah. Well, what other things that would you recommend to somebody who has an idea and, and, geez, you know, what do I do next? You know, all I have an idea. I don't have a prototype or anything. What's the best way would you suggest to somebody? Well, if, it, if it's hardware, I think you have to... Um, you got to really figure out, it, it's difficult because if it's hardware, you know, you're going to need a lot of money to really build it, depending on how complicated the product is. And so the only thing I recommend to people is don't, don't go on a pre-sale site or, you know, a crowdfunding site until you, you got to invest something to really make sure it's going to work because there's a lot of carnage in that space where people have put stuff on. Everyone loves it because they put something on that's like awesome, right? Like, yeah, right. I'm on a, a, a car that flies also. Like, you know, so everyone buys it. And then you get there, you only have, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars, which just sounds like a lot of money, but when you actually go out to build something, it's nothing. Yeah. And you can't build your flying car. Now you have a bunch of people pissed off at you. So, um, you know, I think the best thing is either start with something really simple. And that way you don't really need a prototype because it's like, you know, a flower pot, you know, something that's right. like a cool looking flower pot. Like, right. you know you can build it and you just need to get pre-orders. Um, but if you're doing something like, a, you know, an internet enabled doorbell with Wi-Fi that goes to a cloud service, that goes to mobile apps, <laughs> you should definitely have at least some engineers around making yeah. sure that you're doing this. But, but without crowdfunding, we would never be where we are. We needed that cash and those customers to, to get to where we are. So. Well, that's important. the other thing. I guess you really got more than cash. I mean, if you went out because you have a good idea and some background, you could have raised maybe the capital to get it done, right? But sure. getting customers to fund it, man, you don't have to hire anybody's girlfriend. To... <laughs> you, you, know, you, you don't. You don't lose any equity, which yeah. is which is great. You um, you get customers, which is always great. You get feedback on the product before you ship it, mm -hmm. which so you could awesome. tweak it and make it better. And we did, like we, this was originally just a battery operated design. And then ah. we had customers saying to us, but I want to hook it up to my doorbell. Ah. So like, That's a great idea. Let's do that. And then we made it dual power, which we never would have done. Right. Had we not had that customer feedback. So I think, you know, being able to get customer feedback, the value of that, and you can survey random people and do all this sort of stuff, but a person that the best survey is someone gives you their credit card. Absolutely, that's man. The you want. Like, that's I used to be in the business of doing market studies, and I thought they were all nonsense. Nobody put up money. <laughs> they, they are. I mean, you know, it, when someone pays you two hundred bucks, you yeah. list them. Yeah. Well, th this is a terrific idea. I think you're going to be, you know, selling millions and millions of more. Uh, and so we could find it on. Oh, what is it? <laughs> Get doorbot. Getdoorbot.com, right there. Find all about it. And you said an interesting thing about it. Like, because it's an external thing you put on your front door, and it, it's really very secure. But people are so paranoid about somebody stealing it. You know, <laughs> the doorbells, <laughs> you know, yeah. thief in your neighborhood. Exactly. That you will give them an extra free one if anybody steals it, right? If it's, if it's ever stolen, we'll give you a free one. And because it's, it, I mean, for two reasons. One is we want to back up our product. Right. It's, it's never going to get stolen because no one's right. stealing it. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's an easy promise because you won't have to keep it. Problem, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much, James. You're a sweet and thank guy. You, nice, and nice thank you. Okay, take care. 
Okay, that's what we need now in this country. We need people taking ideas, creating new ideas. All the old stuff is not working. We need people like you out there creating new ideas, creating new jobs, and, and getting this you know, country on its path to greatness again. We're slipping behind. Other people are catching up and maybe they'll pass us, so we gotta get in gear again, and you can help. Well, I'm old enough to remember back in the 50s, there were like you know, three television stations. That's it. That's all we want. And radio stations. Maybe there was a handful, a dozen or whatever. Now we went to cable, right? And we had a hundred channels <laughs> or whatever. You know, starting in the 80s, we had that. And now with the internet, we have tens of thousands of radio channels, video channels, whatever, that you could watch <laughs> and get information on. Or more importantly, Importantly, anybody could be a broadcaster. Right. Before you need all this money and everything to set up a radio station, a television station, or whatever. <laughs> now you need nothing. Yeah, you know, all you need is your your computer and a web uh, uh, web access, and you got a TV station. You got a, t t a television station. I mean, I basically do. I, I run a TV show on uh, YouTube and and on uh, Blog Talk Radio. That's another way I, I distribute. So they have the, all these distribution channels for anybody and it costs you next to nothing to have your own station. But the question is, how are you going to pay for it? Okay. Where are you going to get money? Are you going to go down to the local car dealer or whatever and try to get them to advertise <laughs> Joe's <laughs> information about local sports? Well, you may be, but maybe not. Now, there's a website that gets you the money to do that. Now, this is called Pom Pod Fund for podcasting or uh, you know whether it's audio, video, a little both or any kind of casting that you're going to do on any kind of regular basis. This is a funding site where you could put, you know, he helps you get money to raise so you make money out of doing a podcast. I mean, some podcasts are very, very important. Go to Blog Talk Radio or, or just put uh, podcasts in there or Blog Talk or something like that and you'll see dozens of platforms that are out there that have all these stations on it. Anybody has a station. Big stars, little stars, every anybody could have a TV or radio show now. But the key is how you're going to pay for it. And that's right, Podcast or Pod Fund. This is a crowdfunding site just for people who are doing podcasts or, or video casts, you know, like I do, to get money for doing it. He's got it all worked out, all the back end, all the mechanics of doing that. You just have to have the show. <laughs> and he's like your advertising agency or your marketing arm or whatever. Yeah, and he just takes a little percentage. I mean, it's just small, you know, like 5% or so. I forget. Seven would be a lot. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's all it is. But it costs you no upfront money to do this you test it out so if you have any kind of podcast or think you're having a podcast so go go do the podcast now because it'll, it'll take you about really 20 minutes to get your own podcast going right now you know do one of these podcasting sites that's about all and it'll take you another 20 minutes 30 minutes or whatever to start fundraising on his site that's it and if it costs you 50 bucks, that's going to be a lot. <laughs> and so now you have your own TV station, radio station, whatever it is. You know, what a neat country we're living in. That's why information is out there everywhere. I mean, the big guys are going out of business. You know, <laughs> you know the subscribers or people that watch all the networks is, is going down. I mean, people watch even cable channel is going down. My kids never watch broadcast TV or cable TV or anything like that. They're like 30 years old or so you know they're not doing that they get it all here you know so now everybody can have a voice uh, on here too because it doesn't take a big fat cap and a bunch of money to be a broadcaster all you need is a PC <laughs> and a few ideas and a little gumption so watch how this site could help you it's really cool well Robert Becker <laughs> with pod fund you got the greatest new crowdfunding side, I think, that we have in this country. I mean, you, you have a place for people to get free money, literally, from the internet to do broadcasting on the internet. So if you want to have your own radio station or television station or whatever, you're the guy to know because you'll show them how to get money from the internet to make all that happen. What made you think of doing this?
Exactly. Well, Matthew, I, I worked um, for in the radio industry for a few years in the 90s. Ah. Last doing it. <laughs> it was my dream. Top 40 or stuff? Or what? Top 40. Top yeah. 40. Wonderful. Euchre yeah. jock, if you will. <laughs> That's what we call ourselves. Um, loved what I was doing, but got out of that field and, and moved into the real world. And, and then uh, in the early 2000s, was intrigued by internet radio. Video, and then a few uh, years later, got into doing some freelance voiceovers out of the house and uh, dabbled cool. slightly in podcasting. And had a, I thought it was just a really neat medium and thought it was a, a really cool way for people who may have always wanted to work in radio to yeah. have that opportunity, but you have complete control over what you're yeah. doing. And, and within the last year, when I started to formulate this idea, it just seemed to, seemed to make sense. I still have always had that interest in podcasting, and even though I've moved away from radio and voiceovers and all of that, and uh, I just really started to think more and more about the notion of trying to help podcasters and, and video creators out and, mm -hmm. and come up with a platform for them that is geared specifically to, to them, and it's not some one-size-fits-all mm -hmm. type of platform. This is specifically for creators, podcast creators or video creators or what have you. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think that this, this idea is right on the money, no pun intended, but you know, <laughs> I think that this is a, a perfect vehicle because you're, you're pulling in all of these, these podcasts, yeah. these, these podcasters who all share this same vision. They, by extension, have their own audience. And right. you bring all these people together, and you're really starting. You, yeah. You've got the financial aspect to it, but there's a there's a visibility access as well, right. where no, you're opening right, up the audience to a lot a lot of people. What I think of is somebody like Rush Limbaugh, you know, who has a big audience. He writes a book, and it's all sell. It's the same thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if exactly. you have a podcast audience or something like that, so you're providing uh, like something for them to sell to generate revenue out of it and, and the person doing the podcast doesn't have to worry about credit cards or anything just yeah. go to the bank with the money yeah yeah and when i when i got into doing the freelance voiceover work out of my house yeah. i i invested a lot of money in some equipment and like i said i dabbled in podcasting so i kind of have a little bit of an understanding yeah. as to what some of the challenges were um f for someone who wants to move into this and and knowing knowing that podcasting doesn't exactly reel in all sorts right. of advertising dollars, <laughs> this is a way for people yeah. to live up to or fulfill their passion yeah. and, and perhaps improve on, on what they're doing. No, I think now, I mean, that, that's like my issue. I mean, I sold reference books for many years, made lots of money at it. Nobody buys a reference book anymore. So yeah. I still have a story to tell and it's very difficult. I don't think people have figured it out yet. You know, like, uh, uh uh, Washington Post is going out of business. Who would have thought? Yeah. <laughs> New York yeah. Times is next. You know, mm -hmm. you know, the uh, Wall Street Journal is on its last legs. And, you know, it's just that all media doesn't work because people aren't buying it in traditional forms. Yeah. So your form is a new form that people are getting used to uh, financing through that motive. Uh, and, and so to take your idea and use that new form to finance it that you have. I mean, I, I think it's a natural and it, it's, I think what you're also doing is helping the country hear these voices, you know, exactly. And, and that they wouldn't normally hear. And it's a way to finance these new voices, you know, and then these voices don't have to go to some co big conglomerate and be told what to say. <laughs> exactly. Yes. You know, and, and, and to that end, there's a lot of really talented podcasters yeah. out there and they may not realize how talented they really yeah. are. And that's what I think is really neat. And there's, there's some people who, if, if, if radio were a completely different industry and it wasn't so difficult to break into, right. there's a lot of people who could potentially work in radio and they may not even realize it. Right. Well, no, you're right. Because I'm sure they weren't trained to it. They see something shrieking and it's hard to know. But you're in something that's growing. I mean, not only is crowdfunding probably going to be the next big thing, and I think this country since the internet, you know, yeah. but we still have, you know, this information we're living on more and more. I mean, the experiences, I think we're buying less crap in the world <laughs> yeah. and buying more experiences and information, the things that mm -hmm. come out of a podcast or a, a video cast or whatever you call them, mm -hmm. you know, video wise, that, and, and you're in the forefront almost pulling that. You know, something like you will be pulling that for the country. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Are yeah, you going to yeah, be I in other sure. countries too or not? Well, right now we're we're specific to the United States, and uh -huh. I I would love to say that it's international, but but the one hurdle <laughs> like I have New Jersey is, is international. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. I, I've got some hurdles that I need to clear as far as processing payments, but yeah. there, that's some stuff that we're working on, and yeah. Um, but we'll start in the United States and, and we'll grow from there. We're, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes. So how long does it take now? Well, actually, now for the, the launch, you're launching May 3rd, uh, 1914 or 2014. Well, I'm an old guy. <laughs> March 3rd, 2014. Yeah. And uh, uh, so for that, you're looking for people to be on your front page on the opening because you're going to hit the ground running, right? And yeah, and you've been building this momentum for weeks and months now, so people yeah. can still sign up to try to be in that front page when you when you launch, right? Yeah, exactly. And I, I actually launched the website. Um, there's 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 been a couple phases to the launch. Uh -huh. It was just basically a placeholder web page where people were tantalized by <laughs> what this might be. I just did that to draw up some interest and obviously tried to uh, get some word of mouth spreading. We launched the the website in a limited fashion. It was about 35 days ago, and um, and and we we did that just strictly to start recruiting for campaigns. So so if there's a podcaster who's yeah. interested in in creating a campaign and they want to have the opportunity to be part of this launch um, on March 3rd, if they get their campaign in now, they have that opportunity to be their front and center on our homepage. Ah. And then come March 3rd, that's when all those campaigns that have been submitted will go live, uh, and we'll start to accept can or accept pledges rather. So now, from now until March third, people can sign up and get their uh, pie, you know, their campaign all set up and ready to go when you pull the switch. And exactly. about how long? Yeah, you know, how long? Is, you know, what's a short time it could take to get a campaign up and going? Yeah, you know, technically speaking, if someone has a video ready to go, and it yeah. really doesn't take much to sit down and shoot a, a mm. three-minute video to sell yeah. to people who who you want to solicit money from, but. But technically, you could have a campaign up and running in less than a week's time. Wow! Huh? Yeah, that's cool. And you know, and people spend you know months, years banging on the doors trying to get money, and here you could do it in a week's time. Uh, and really, the, I guess the biggest hurdle is sitting down and doing that video. You require a video, right, for the production? Yeah, yeah. Because mm. if if we're talking about the medium of podcasting or right. video or whatever. <laughs> you it, want to be reading. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A, a static image isn't going to get it done. And yeah. quite frankly, I don't think people are going to be interested in giving you money if, right. if they don't know who you are and you're not talking to them. Wait, so. When you say a week, see, I mean, don't forget, I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking now that people are doing podcasts, they're used for performing, they're used to being in front of the microphone. So, I mean, it, to do a three yeah. minute video may only take these people three minutes to do the bloody thing. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> because they've been talking. But you're talking a week because of the back and forth with you guys to get it all in i mean the, the actual time involved and in putting the information they need for you together i mean that doesn't take a week's work right no no not at all okay. no i when i when i say a week i'm thinking in terms of just what it might take to work with the podcaster and right. get the the details worked out and to make sure everything right. meets certain standards we just don't want to accept them as they come in and just right. let them go live we want to do, we, we do want to put them through a review process. Hmm. So in other words, if, if it takes a few hours or whatever it is to get it together, send to you, then you go back and forth and ah, you forgot this T and that I and stuff like that. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, 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 I mean, we want to do our best to present yeah. the podcasters professionally as right. well. So you know, we no, wanna... it's a slick site too. I mean, it, it's, uh, you know, for a new guy in St. Louis doing this, you know, compete with the big guys. I mean, you look really good. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it. I really yeah. am. And so it's at podfund.com. So you, you could start giving money uh, on March 3rd to find programs to invest in um, or to support. But until then, take your podcast, your idea or whatever it is and apply to be a f fundraiser on this, right? Exactly, right. exactly. Right. Okay, so you have an idea for a show? <laughs> oh, think of one! How do you like to talk? <laughs> Just say, hey, this is the I Like the Talk show, and see what happens. 
Now here's a new company <laughs> that you've probably never heard about before, but what they're doing is giving the power of electricity to 1.3 billion people that have no electricity. These are people in underdeveloped worlds, you know, that have cell phones, but they don't have electricity. So if they have a cell phone, it takes them a day, some a day and a half to recharge their cell phone. They have to go to another village, you know, that takes them two and a half hours to get there. They have to wait in line. Somebody has a car battery or whatever that they charge their cell phone up and charges them an arm and a leg in their terms anyway, and come back to where they live and and now they have a charged cell phone. Well now what this uh, company does is solve that problem for the people. You know, and, and it's ingenious because it's all done with solar technology. For very little money you can have solar panels and be charging the cell phones of the whole village. But the problem is that the cell panels will maybe cost a couple thousand dollars to set up. You know, but they don't have a couple thousand dollars. So they raise money on the internet like this and they just get loans, you get the money back, they give them to an entrepreneur who sets up the cell towers, not cell towers, but you know, solar panels, you know, and now the village can charge their cell phones and it costs them a few pennies or whatever, but, but the, the guy who put up the cell panels gets that money and pays back the loan. That's right. And these people do it all on the internet. These are people, you know, organize this whole thing, you know, and, and you get paid back. I mean, they have really not a default rate at all. Everybody's getting their money back. And, and, but look at the good it's doing. You know, for a few dollars, you provide somebody, you know, instead of having kerosene lamps, you know, that smelly stuff or whatever, they're able to have light at night so they could read, <laughs> so they could study longer, you know, to go to school the next day. You know, this is the kind of situation it is. You know, and that's why, you know, what a few dollars from someone, you know, in our country that spends it on a latte, you know, could provide, you know, uh, solar power for their cell phone for months and months and months. <laughs> I mean, the power that we have because we have a few dollars in our pocket. But more importantly, look how they did this. Look how they're able to use the internet to connect people with money to people who have cell phones but no money and no electricity or whatever and make it all happen. The world is getting so small. Somebody with two dollars here in New Jersey is giving his financing somebody you know with two dollars to get a solar panel in the middle of Africa somewhere so they could have don't have to spend a day and a half going to get their cell charge now that's technology watch this well, Samir Halai, I just think you're single-handedly, your organization is saving the world I mean Sun Funder right is just going to God, it looks like the what billion and a half people that don't are not receive any electricity now. That yes. you're you're going to get it to all of them, and, and have the rest of the world just really almost make money doing it too. I mean, it's amazing. You're lending money to underdeveloped countries, right? Who are going to put villages are going to have sources of uh, solar power to do their cell phones or electricity to read a book at night or whatever it is and you just do it with a loan to these people and the people who are helping you do it get their money back <laughs> everybody wins and some family is really going to improve the rest of the world just like you are right and become an <laughs> so so what made you think about this well, uh, when I was in grad school, I was introduced to the idea of um, uh, the fortune at the bottom of the pyramid. And the idea there is that there are very compelling, profitable businesses that you can build around addressing the needs of the underserved population. Um, and um, I had done some work um, in making such a win-win-win um, type company uh, in the healthcare space in the U.S. And I wanted to apply that model to the developing world. Uh, and that's where I met my uh, founder, uh, co-founder, Ryan, who has a background in solar finance uh, Hi, coming Ryan. from Wells Fargo. Um, and as you said, you know, there's 1.3 billion people with no electricity. And then if you look at um, the people that are connected to the grid, uh, but they don't have 24-7 uh, electricity, and that's 2.5 billion people as well. So uh, there's a big energy need in the world. And as, you know, as people... Um, come out of poverty and as we uh, grow, uh, there's going to be a growing energy need. And the traditional farms that we have now are just not equipped to meet that. Um, and 
in developing world, uh, in, in most of the regions where people don't have electricity, um, solar actually is uh, a cheaper alternative uh, with no subsidies. And that's where it gets really interesting because the economics are in place where something like 10 months of kerosene money is enough to get a solar panel, uh, a system in place, and then you have electricity for years to come. And it's not just a, a replacement for kerosene, it's actually significantly better. It has more cleaner light, uh, cell phone charging, and, and all the needs that people have in those regions. So it's actually a compelling uh, net uh, rational economic model. So somebody who, who, who's spending, you know, in, in a village spending, uh, you know, 10 months worth of, of money on oil for kerosene can take that same money and put a solar panel on and they'll have it forever, right? That's right. And, but, well, they the shelf life. but they don't have that 10 months to in, of money to invest. So that's where you guys come in, right? That's right. And you lend the money. So then they'll save money in the long run, but it's getting past those 10 months. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And you do it. So you have a, a cape, a, a red cape, you fly in and, and do that. Something like that. But we actually rely on um, uh, other entrepreneurs, uh, which, are, which have years to the ground, who are close to these regions. And we um, help them grow by, by financing them uh, to achieve what their company's goals are. So this is like a, a local solar company, you know, in the village says, hey, I, I can get solar to everybody, but my customers don't have money. So what you're doing through your platform is lending that solar company money so they could <laughs> get it to the customers. And as the customers pay daily or weekly or monthly or whatever it is, they pay you back the money, you get all the money back, and they get power for the rest of the life. That's right. Wow, what a deal. <laughs> Why can't we do that in the States? <laughs> That's terrific. And, and what's really interesting to me too is that you're creating entrepreneurism, you know, jobs and things like that to, uh, and they're getting better resources being used on something that perpetuates forever instead of just burning it up in oil, which is unhealthy, and they probably have shorter lifespans breathing that oil in them. Uh, yeah, when you start measuring the impact, uh, you know, like kerosene lamps give you five lumens of light, but uh, a typical solar light gives you 70 lumens of light. 70 versus five, wow. Yeah. And in your room right now, you know, we are used to uh, 90 lumens. Uh, that's kind of what we do as a typical task light. So imagine what you can do with just five lumens. Wow. You really cannot do much. Uh, and it's smoky and it's actually the cause of, um, you know, there have been, we actually have seen people say that uh, there have been fires and people have lost people because of the kerosene lamps. Uh, it's a big hazard in these closed places. So you're not just replacing a kerosene lamp. You're actually improving the quality of life, giving a significantly better uh, quality. Um, and then not just that, you're also then getting cell phone charging. So, uh, you know, that's another thing that has been very fascinating. Uh, typically, there's around 600 million people in the world that have phones with no way of charging them. Six, so there's a, over a half a billion people have, char have phones, but they can't charge them, huh? That's right. And they rely on them for, you know, for uh, access to opportunity Every and information. And that's really the only thing they have um, to get access. Uh, and typically, like, it could take... Um, like a day to charge a phone. A day to charge a phone. I mean, the electricity is that slow or what? <laughs> you know, you walk out for two hours to the village uh, ah, and then there's some, some uh, person that has a car battery that they have charged uh, in some neighboring city and driven back uh, ah, yeah. to this uh, village. And then they use a car battery to charge your phone off it and charge you money. And it takes five to six hours to do that. And then boom, a day is gone. But now with a, a solar charger at home, you have light at night and you can also charge your phone overnight and you've just not just uh, saved the money on charging the phone you also saved a day on uh, charging the phone so that's a you know what like a couple hundred dollar system at the home saves them a day of work every two days that they have to do to go charge the phone i mean that's i mean the resources that that you're saving now people get involved in this by going to sun founder right and they can lend money to your projects which are all vented right so the people we're giving money to are not just somebody putting on your website they're people you've checked out businesses or whatever and so in that and then people get all their money back that they're helping with this right that's right yeah so yeah we are we are uh, more like a bank in many ways because uh -huh. we are a finance company we right. do very strict diligence on the partners that we put on the website anyone you see there 
yeah. is someone that has been vetted very, very well. We look at their uh, business documents. We understand their business plan. We look at the way they have been uh, doing their work so far. Um, we don't provide, uh, uh, we don't work with partners that are too early stage. We're looking at partners that have learned things from the ground wow. and, um, and they're now looking to scale. So, you know, like there's a lot of things that you have to go through when you start a solar company in this space. You first think it's just the product. You figure out what the product is, but then you quickly realize that distribution is a big problem. So you have to figure out your distribution model. How are you going to get these things to the people that are far away and hard to reach? And then a service model. What are you going to do when things break down? Oh, uh, oh nothing uh, breaks down. <laughs> so once you start and then repayments, uh, yeah. what's your, how are you going to collect payments? Is it mobile payments? Are you doing it through phones? Or is someone going knocking on every door and getting the money? So once companies have figured those things out and they've done five or 10 villages, uh, they, and they eventually run out of capital because as you said, it's capital intensive. You have to put money in upfront. Uh, so now they're like, hey, we have a model. We have everything in place. I'm going to do this for the next thousand villages, and we need money for that. And that's when they go to a bank, uh, and traditional banks money. feel like, nope, this is too risky. We don't want to do this. And they're too big at that point to uh, rely on microfinance organizations. So that's where we come in. It's, it's a niche which is so huge because there's so many people around the world that have reached that stage right. where they just need money to scale. And that's where we come in. And what happens for you? Sorry, go ahead. I was just saying what happens when you then go to the site is now you're looking at these whitelisted, high quality projects that then you can invest in. And you can put as little as ten dollars. But I mean, it looks like everybody's getting all their money back now, you know, on your project. So nobody uh, is going to lose. And it looks like I can even put little bits of money in different projects if I want. So to spread the money also, but I could give it as gifts. So I could give like a hundred dollars to this person who needs, you know, a solar panel so he doesn't have to spend a day charging a cell phone and I could do it in a friend's name and then they get actually to get the money back too. So I'm <laughs> giving them a gift and solving that person's problem with uh, recharging the cell phone somewhere else in the world. I mean, it's just give, 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 and everybody's, you know, everybody's getting something out of this deal. It's just a wonderful thing to do. And, and I, think, I think mainly people should get involved and know about what you're doing is how this model works. I mean, what you're really doing is teaching the rest of us how you can do something that is more than social responsible, but really helping people, you know, as an entrepreneur, you know, with, with nobody's greed, taking a lot of money out of all this stuff, but everybody's getting real help with very little effort and very little money from anybody else to make it all happen. And, and because they're saving money by what you're pro providing. So it's everybody's winning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have a very, again, uh, we only invest in projects where we are convinced that the end users are way better off than they were before. Uh, and that actually is not just for, you know, it's a socially responsible thing to do, but again, it's, that's where it's aligned because it's also a business thing to do. Absolutely. If you want your repayments back, you want to make sure people are better off. And they're, if they're better off now, and they'll create more to society too and give more back, you know. So you're helping so much. Well, it's so much fun to find you. I never heard about this until we, I found you at sunfounder.com, right? And so people should go there and see how money, I mean, don't go to the bank. Don't save your money in the bank. Save it at SunFounder and get somebody, don't have to spend a day charging their cell phone. <laughs> Thank you so much for being there. Thanks. Okay, you're going to help out, you learn, you steal an idea, whatever. I mean, there are ideas like this happening all over the globe. You know, that's what's neat. I can sit here in my kitchen or living room, where the hell I am, yeah, and find out and talk to these people like this. Now, that's cool. Okay, this will show you how good this idea is. <laughs> this fella had a great idea. So he went to the internet and he tried to raise like $50,000 for his idea. Well, instead, he got $130,000. <laughs> Almost three times what, what he really originally asked for. That's what's neat about going to the internet and looking for help and money to do things in life. You know, you go to a bank, you go to the government or something like that. They want to know well, how you're going to spend every penny and they're not going to give you a penny more and you 
better account for all this kind of stuff. Well, here's a place you go for it. And hey, no, we'll give you more. <laughs> you say you want 50,000? Ah, we'll give you $130,000. That's what's cool about raising money on the internet to do things. You know, you can get more. You'll never know how much you're going to get until you try. You can ask for something, but then if you have a good idea, they give you more. And this is really an exercise bar. It's a clever little device, you know, real inexpensive. You have all this gym equipment and everything. Well, this guy who's really, you know, into fitness, I mean, not a fanatic, but always, you know, he's working hard and want to be um, exercised. And he developed this little bar, you know, with straps and everything. It's a great idea. You know, I'm probably going to get one too. <laughs> Actually, I ordered one. I was so convinced about this uh, because it, it eliminates so many problems in life trying to get the exercise when you need it because you can have it here. I could sit up now here and, and do some reps and some exercise and get a little this you know 70 year old flab in shape or whatever the heck you're fighting with you uh, so watch him watch how he did this and 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 even the equipment itself is interesting but more importantly how you could take your idea and even get more money for it than you ever imagined well Damien Sanders man you're gonna make this old man <laughs> <laughs> into an, uh, a Greek god, you know, as soon as I get one of your X bars, <laughs> they are just incredible. But you know, I, I, and you're, you're raising like, you know, God, you sold over five, six hundred of these yeah. things, you know, just in a couple weeks. You know, you raised fifty thousand dollars in what? Yeah, well, ten days? Is that what that. you did? Wow, that's amazing. What a hot thing. But more importantly, I, I think your story, you know, you being like, you were the world's best snowboarder well, like 15 20 years exactly. ago there was only three or four of us back then that were on top of the, of the industry um, and you know sean Palmer uh -huh. and craig kelly and this was long before the sean whites of the world came in and this was i see five 27 years ago and uh and so i was the number one extreme snowboarder in the world so i was jumping off the biggest cliffs doing backflips off of 50 foot cliffs and, <laughs> and uh, people were eating that up back in the day it was it was the coolest thing and uh, and what a place i lived in tahoe so it was everything fell into place <laughs> Yeah, but watching your videos as a young guy doing that, man, you exude it. You know, enthusiasm, <laughs> energy, a thrill for life. You know, yeah. I mean, you you were just obvious. I mean, but you're talking that way now about yeah. the X bar yeah. too. I mean, you have that same kind of energy. So what surprised me, you could take that energy, that thrill of doing somersaults in the middle of the air somehow with snowboards, and and, and you still have that kind of thrill of helping yeah. people. That's one get of the most fit. fun parts about yeah. this whole project is getting the response from people who are getting fit. Because I can't believe that something that I yeah. invented, some little thing I was tinkering with in the warehouse a year ago, is now getting getting people fit, you know, and they're so excited about it. They're sending yeah. me before and after shots. Um, they're all on, you know, diets now. They're getting ready for summer, and the timing is perfect because summer's coming right up, and everybody can't wait to get their bar, you know, the, their real bars, you know, just the prototypes are circulating right now. There's only 50 of them in existence, and everyone is working perfect in that. People so it's really one of the shower, the shower bar, the, yeah. the stall <laughs> bar. Is what it is. But you made this look like a, yeah, a work I, of I art. It, too. it looks like a... a futuristic weapon from an aliens movie or something it's so cool looking and it's so uh -huh. functional and everywhere you grab it feels just right you know and then the, the way the ends rotate and you can add more or less resistance mm -hmm. bands and give more and more resistance to do a stronger or a less you know a more aerobic workout it's it's incredible like i can't believe we stumbled upon this and it hasn't been invented yet it's just been all and, and, and so you have, instead of buying, like, I, up in my bedroom there, I got this big chunk of gear, you know, with thousands of yeah. dollars, you know, to do all this crap, you know, and I don't, I could never get it out of my room now, I don't know how they got it in there, and now, well, for 150 bucks or so, I got your bar, I could do all the same really? stuff as up there That's and the cool easier. Thing. When I was yeah. going through the inventing stages of this, everything that, I would come yeah. back and I'd watch YouTube videos of different exercises and different workouts, everything was adaptable to the X bar, like it was upright rows. Overhead wow. tricep extensions, behind the back extensions, uh, squats, mm -hmm. glutes, uh, and everything. I couldn't believe it. Just I don't even know what all that stuff <laughs> is, but I guess it's important. <laughs> everything you could possibly do, you could just transfer right over to the X bar. You know? so that's why I can really claim. But more importantly, I can't bring that machine down here when I want to yeah, kill yeah, five yeah. minutes, you know? So, and, and then I could be anywhere in a hotel room exactly or my office and have that export. Them everywhere they go. So it'll be in your office and it'll be, yeah. you know, I take it to Vegas, I take it to right. Cabo, I worked out every day in Cabo. It just, it was awesome. Yeah.
Wow. And, and the, the, but the, you have a couple more weeks that people are going to get a real deal if they buy yeah, this so now, right? Yeah, there's extra pieces that come with it. It's free shipping. So the Kickstarter people get the very first ones off the production line. So uh, it definitely is a benefit to get them on Kickstarter. And we are so stoked on our product. Right. <laughs> but I mean, you get it, you know, at a discount. You you get it first to anybody yeah. else, and all this kind of stuff. And, and and it's just elegant in design. So I mean, how does a you know an extreme snowboarder become yeah, an yeah. artist? Well, yeah, that's, that's what that's I a funny get. Story because my partner, who is the business side of this, his design team designed uh -huh. the grip, which is the the clincher. The grip is the most beautiful part of that. I, and see. I designed the bar. I knew exactly how I wanted it to feel and look. And when I designed it, it looked like crap. He took it. Took it to the design team and they sent me back designs that it, it looked like it was from Aliens. It was just incredible, and I, and I love I that see. look and that futuristic look. So yeah. when we first got the grips, you know, we flown over uh, and we we slid it on, you know, and it was a pain in the ass to get it on, but and it was it fit to the yeah. quarter of an inch. It was beautiful. And then you wow. start doing looking at it, and you show people, and their eyes light up. You know, you're onto something. You're like, wow, this thing looks like yeah. worth a million bucks. And and uh, you know, it's not a crappy piece of uh, you know, infomercial equipment. It's it's the real deal. <laughs> yeah, no. I've been in the infomercial business, you know, and all that stuff looks yeah, good on yeah. TV, but <laughs> make it sound when you get it I home, step sometimes I watch those commercials because now I'm in the industry and I want to see what's out there, and I yeah. I laugh out loud at some of the stuff I see that they're trying to shove yeah. down people's throats. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, it may work one yeah. five minutes, and then yeah, you know, it, it just. But I, I could tell just from the video, and that's why people should just look at your video because they're wonderful. <laughs> Not only the attractive model you have, exercise. Yeah. She sells it. <laughs> but but to see the video of you, you know, even uh, you have some of the uh, uh, the skateboard. I mean, it's, why is it extreme snowboarding, and also, but how you did this thing and sculpt your body yeah. in three months. You know, you were, you were an old fat dad. <laughs> yeah, and you turned out. <laughs> and that's when I said I have to do something about this. You know, I was feeling like crap. I was looking like crap. And uh, and that was like the catalyst yeah. for the X-Bar. That's, that's why it became. And, well, that's, I mean, all us baby boomers. That's, uh, I'm in a, gener a couple generations past you. And boy, it, it's it's a struggle every day. And so trying to find something easier without it. Or going to the gym. I mean, that's just some yeah. nonsense. Why do I want to go in the car? And then, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the gym is well, not for everybody. Yeah. It wasn't for me. I, mean, I could not find the time, nor did I want to yeah. be there. I just, it wasn't my life. I think young people want to pick up other young people or yeah. something like that. I mean, it, it's more than a gym for these people. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, it's more. <laughs> I find myself watching I, I mean, a movie. You know, if I take time out to watch a movie, yeah. I'm working out I mean, the whole time. Anywhere. Yeah. And then plus gym memberships could be a yeah. couple hundred bucks, you know? So yeah, that, probably. And that's every month for maybe. For bucks, you're working yeah. out for years at this one bar. Yeah. It's phenomenal. Yeah, no, and, and there's nothing in it. It seems like a break yeah. or have a problem with or All anything. Yeah. Yeah. Zero complaints. It's just phenomenal. Everybody's using them daily yeah. and everybody Zero. loves them. Yeah. And you've sent them out like 25 yeah, or 50, 50 of these already to fitness right instructors. Like one call yet. 50 or so. Yeah. It's just been, it's been nothing but 100% yeah. positive. Which we thought like we were going to have all kinds right. of you know, little problems that you don't foresee and it, and it hasn't happened. And so that's why we're so excited about this. And it's just, it's so right that we just can't believe we came up with it. <laughs> But you can hook it up to your door. You do push-ups yeah. with this so, thing. You do everything, and it's just I don't know what's it like oh, six no, foot 20, bar, 20, it's five inches. foot. It's, it's pretty small. Thirty-four so inches. Wow, right. so that's less than three feet. Yeah. And so you can. I was able to wow, set it yeah. horizontally in my wow. check-in baggage and take it on into Cabo with me. So it travels. Oh really? Wow. And then in Vegas, <laughs> I well, the that's the thing. So I had it in my hotel room, and before we went out, I was you know, pumping curls in the hotel room. <laughs> yeah, just tell me. Right. <laughs> Well, that's wonderful. So it's going to be ready. You actually, you only have like two weeks yeah. left, right, to get in on this thing. Uh, so you got to get in on it now. And, and if you go to xbar.com, yes. that will get you to yeah. Kickstarter and all you need and watch those great videos about how the, and you said a hundred and how many exercises I, I you can do this? 120 and that's not including like the three different grips for everything. That's just solid exercises. So it, it's phenomenal. And you can wow. do everything on you know, the ground so, support, which is the little docks. So you do all your push-up and ab right. exercises, you stand up, clip on the resistance bands, and you do all your standing exercises. Then you hook up the door angle. Wow. So you're, you're going to get rid of this <laughs> thing for yeah. me, huh? <laughs> the truffle shuffle. <laughs> and then you hook up yeah. the door to anchor, and you do a whole bunch more exercises. So you just, every day we come up with something wow. new. We keep getting videos from the people who do have them with new, new things I didn't even think of. And your five-year-old is doing push-ups. Push 
She's yeah. got eight perfect ones before. She probably want me to let you know. <laughs> wow! See, and all women complain, oh, we're not built for push-ups. Man, if a five-year-old girl could <laughs> yeah. do them. Yeah. Anybody yeah, could do them. <laughs> well, that, that's wonderful, Damien. And so to find out about it, it's xbar.com. Easy to spell. You don't even have to go to college <laughs> to spell xbar. That's, that's why you got this that's website, why I got the right? Name. <laughs> xbar.com and, and get it on Kickstarter because you'll never get it at this price again and be the first in your neighborhood to finally get in shape. Absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you. Thanks for being there and thanks for having the enthusiasm you bet. You bet. For, this is an exciting time. for life. I mean, you blew out your knee trying to do this, you know, this yeah. snowboarding, and so I had to do something, and you took that enthusiasm you had for the next thing. Now this is the next chapter of my yeah. life, and I'm so excited about it. In a yeah. year from now, I can't wait yeah. to see where we are. Wonderful. That's it. The key to life is being excited <laughs> when you get up every morning, yeah. right? <laughs> well, thank you, Damon. Take care, thank and thanks you. for being there. All right. Okay, so what's your idea? Okay, and you're ready to at least try and see if you try, you got nothing to lose. You put it on, you know, a crowdfunding site, and whether if you get nothing, pfft, you have nothing now. So what? You're going to learn something by doing anything. And if you get a big surprise, that somebody gives you three times the amount of money you got. <laughs> so you only get the surprises if you start trying.